The Windy Fire started with a lightning strike on September 9th, 2021. In the end, it burned across 97,000 acres of grasslands and forests. More than 100 structures were destroyed, and hundreds of the world's largest trees severely burned or killed. In the early weeks of the struggle, firefighters attacked the fire's leading edges and flanks, only to have their work wiped out by pyrocumulus clouds of smoke carrying burning embers far across their hand lines, bulldozer lines, and mountain roads, consuming red and white fir trees, sugar and ponderosa pine trees, and cedars. The Windy Fire moved toward Long Meadow Grove in the heart of the Sequoia National Monument. Firefighters cut fire line ahead of the paved trail of 100 giants. They wrapped walking bridges in fire-resistant material, setting up sprinklers to pre-soak the outlying trees. But the forest just beyond the Sequoia Grove burned hot in steady winds, pushing embers across control lines and hose lays. The ground around the giant sequoias consists of decaying bark several feet thick. Firebrands took root and flames crawled up the trunks of several of the larger trees before being doused by firefighters. The small creek below the groves was quickly drained and water pressure was low. Our previous lines about 50 meters that way got burned over. Our old hose was still good though, so we had to go in and get our hose, drag it on out, reconstruct this hose leg, and get up here and try to put out all these spots so we can hold the fire here, hopefully. Many of the firefighters on scene, including the 10-person Whiskey Flats fire module, had taken part in the extensive fuels management work done by the Sequoia National Forest and its partners in recent years. The clearing of dead, downed, and hazard trees, giving firefighters their best chances of success when the windy fire swept into Longmeadow Grove on September 18th and 19th. Damage beyond the grove was extensive in many places, with temperatures reaching 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The firefighters worked quietly and with a great sense of purpose, protecting giant trees some 1,500 years old. I'm a resource advisor on the fire line here on the Windy Fire. Um, I'm out here with crews working in the Long Meadow Grove, trying to save some of these giant sequoia trees, especially many of these monarchs right now that are threatened by the fire. In the following days, the fire moved downslope from Longmeadow Grove, and on September 22nd, flames pushed east toward the evacuated community of Johnsondale. The road to Johnsondale would be the next place firefighters would make a stand, working to contain spot fires taking root ahead of the main fire. Flames made strong runs over the road and crews backed off until it was safe to pass again. Firefighters got to work attacking the spot fires from below the road, just above the community. Ground fuels were a bit sparser in the rocks and brush and firefighters made good progress working uphill toward the road. But the main fire was moving south around the community and saving the structures in Johnsondale became everyone's focus. Hand crews, heavy equipment, hotshot crews, and fire engine crews all filtered into Johnsondale, awaiting instructions as their crew leaders talked tactics, preparing for a firefight. The work done by the residents and caretakers of Johnsondale was crucial to its survival. Only leaves and pine needles covered the ground around the structures. No standing dead trees, 
or brush or debris piles. And Johnsondale has another thing greatly in its favor, a lake. Sky cranes and other heavy helicopters doused spot fires half a mile ahead of the main fire. But there was nothing anyone could do to stop the flames from surrounding Johnsondale. At first, the fire burned to the north of the community in short grass and smaller trees. But on the south side of Johnsondale, heavy timber dominated the landscape. Spotting embers far ahead of itself, the main fire moved steadily down the mountain. Dark smoke blocked the sun, turning the day to night. With a fist bump, the hotshots line out in front of the Forest Service Work Center, joining fire engine crews getting set to defend the community. The open ground and road access in and out of Johnsonville made the difference for firefighters as they worked together to keep a wall of flames at bay. With the main pulse of the fire well established in the forest bordering the community, firefighters spread out to protect the work center, maintenance sheds, and fuel pumps. Fire engine crews kept the hose lays at full pressure. Firefighters dragged fire hose through the woods and chased down spot fires. Gusting winds scattered embers at firefighters doing their best to hold their ground. The windy fire burned into the night as it moved past Johnsondale with no serious damage to the structures in the community. By October 1st, the weather had cooled enough for firefighters to gain the upper hand on the windy fire. It was time for fire suppression repair, opening forest roads and making them safe for resource advisors and burned area recovery teams visiting the 11 giant sequoia groves affected by the windy fire. It's estimated that between three to 5% of the world's largest giant sequoias were damaged by the windy fire. In the past two years, between 10 to 15 percent of the world's largest giant sequoias, the monarchs, have been decimated. And like communities of people, the giant sequoias are resilient. They're relatively shallow roots stretching out in search of water and a little bit of help the next time lightning strikes. My name is Mike McMillan. Thank you for watching.